off again. Um, this is the plan for today. I want to review some important aspects of the research essay. And so if you have questions, please, about anything I say, and I'm going to try and go fast so you have time in your groups. Um, but if you have questions, you can post them in the chat, or you can just interrupt me and ask right away. You know I'm okay with that, and I want to make sure things are clear for you. And then you'll work with your groups to set the next draft due date, and then we're done. So the good news is next week is Thanksgiving. I know some of you are looking forward to going home. Some of you are home, and you're looking forward to... I don't know, no school. Um, we <laughs> things we can do. I mean, it is it is really nice that there is some time off. We had such. Um, I mean, we had twelve weeks before we had any days off, and to me, that's just a long, long haul. I wish we had days off in between, but that's not how it works here at state, and so I never like it. Anyways, we do not have class Wednesday or Monday. So the next time I'm going to see you is Monday, November 30th. That's the next time I'm gonna see you as a class. The reason for this, besides the holiday, is I wanna make time for you to come see me to get feedback on your drafts. Um, you can make an appointment to see me during office hours. So the time that I would normally be meeting with the class, I'm going to set that up for appointments. So you'll see that those are already on the calendar um, for Wednesday. They're not on the calendar yet for Monday. Um, but anyways, that's what we've got. I think that that's the best use of time. I wanna remind you that you also get feedback. Um, you also get extra credit for going to the writing center. Um, so take advantage of that. Um, what's due next for the essay? The peer review is due Wednesday, November 18 at 11.59. So Thursday, I'll go in and I will post the grades for that. Remember, you do have to comment on the paper and in the chat or in the discussion board. You have to do both in order to get the full points. Um, the peer review of the next full draft, I, I had it originally due on Wednesday, November 25th, so that it would be done before Thanksgiving. But honestly, I am, if your group as a whole says, nah, let's give ourselves a little extra time, I'm fine with that. I want you to be able to support each other. And I want you to feel like you have time to, you know, like post um, a good, a, you know, like a good number of pages so you can get feedback. You only have to read two of the papers from your group. Um, by the way, Tuan messaged me, and it seems I didn't set up the peer review for the introduction um, by group. So please, please just review each, you know, like the people in your group. I think that that's going to be the best since you know each other, since you are familiar with the ideas. I made sure when I set up peer review for this next one that it is by group. So, um, any questions about due dates? I know this is a little bit confusing. Um, by the way, I have not forgotten about the book. Turns out we can turn this into um, an open education resource, which people could actually use as a textbook and would be free to anybody. And we'll start working on that when we come back um, as you're finishing up your essays. And if you really like what you're posting about literacy education or what you're writing, you can take that and you can put that in the book too. Um, but we'll get this done and we'll, um, once this essay's done, there's not a lot left besides your reflection on um, how to be persuasive. So I, I wanna talk about audience because a lot of you, um, 
asked questions about audience and how hard it is to write to students and to professors simultaneously because we seem so different. Um, let me talk about professors first. Professors of first year students do not expect you um, first, second, lower division, even undergraduate, we do not expect you to sound like Teresa Tony. Absolutely not. So what do we value? We value logic. If you aren't making sense, if your ideas don't connect, then um, we won't like that. Um, we value honest and ethical use of evidence. I have seen students distort or misrepresent the evidence or just put it in there like it's supposed to do something, but it's impossible to see because the logic, the analysis isn't there. Um, I, I would like to say that I always catch unethical use of evidence um, because I catch it a lot because I do check sources. Um, have there ever been cases where I didn't catch it? Yeah, probably, um, but I catch it more than not. And so don't assume that I won't. Um, we also value clarity. I know a lot of times students say, I don't have an elevated enough vocabulary. Honestly, I'm most interested in clarity. If you can use four and five syllable words correctly and still get your ideas across clearly, go ahead. But I'm not expecting that. Um, sometimes using those four and five syllable words actually obscures meaning. It hides it. And so make sure that your meaning is clear. All of those things that professors value are things that are gonna make your paper stronger for students. So with your student audience, think about, you know, like what do we assume about most students? And then what can we assume about your particular audience? because you may be writing to people who share your identity. You may be writing to people who have struggled with writing. They may be writing to people who assume that they have to sound white or that they don't understand what that is, um, that they've been raised to be colorblind, that they don't understand what this all this conversation, I mean, like, what are you assuming that they believe, that they know? Think about those things, be very specific, because in your reflection on this essay, you're gonna have to describe the underlying assumptions of your audience and how you appeal to that. Any questions before I move on from this? Um, more of like a, like, I guess a logistical question, but when, like, I know there isn't a set number of pages or paragraphs, but is there like, I don't know, is there like a range you could give me? Cause I, I don't, I don't know if I feel like I don't want it. I was writing my introduction and I couldn't tell if it was too long or too short. And even just having maybe like a range of numbers, not paragraph numbers, but probably like page numbers maybe from students in the past who have done this assignment? Well, the problem here is I, I changed the assignment from the last two years. Oh, okay. Because okay. I wanted students to be able to raise their voices and speak on something um, with passion. And that was not in my previous essays for the 220 class. And I wanted to add that. I've given you a word count. I don't remember what it was because I reduced the word count. Um, and I, so I don't remember right offhand. Yeah, I imagine it is 1500. Yeah. Um, if you Google 1500, how many pages is 1500 words? 
you'll get a word count that's approximate. I would imagine that your, um, if you had an eight page essay, that your introduction would be about two pages and probably um, three to four paragraphs. I imagine that your, the body of your paragraph would be about, and then I would imagine that your, um, so maybe a quarter and then your um, conclusion might be a page. Um, I imagine that you're gonna have probably six, at least six body paragraphs. It, it's, it really, really just depends on what it is you're trying to say and how you go about saying it. Um, how long is too long? If you have information that's not important, um, you'll wanna take it out. Um, anything that doesn't work toward the logic, the development of your argument or essential background information, that should go. Um, So, you know, like I'm fine with a 10 page paper if that's what you end up with, if that's what you need to tell the story that leads to this research, I'm fine with that. Um, did that? Oh, thanks, Anna. Five to seven pages, yeah. Um, and did that answer your question, Andy? Yes, I totally forgot about the workout, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, yes. Sure. Uh, the, this idea of a voice of authority, a lot of you asked about that because it's really hard to sound like an authority when you know that you're not an authority on this topic. What you are an authority on is being a student and the experience of being a student. And so don't forget about that. You know what it's like to be in a literacy education class. You know the frustrations. You know the squelching of your identity. Um, by the time students get to college, most of my students hate writing or they think that they're really bad at it. And they're not. It's just their writing identity has been stripped away from them. And that becomes even more complex with diversity. Um, so think, think about who you are because you have some authorities. Um, a voice of authority, Tony says, using first person and third person, using concise language by eliminating unnecessary words. When we talk, we use unnecessary words and ums and ah. Uh, and you knows, and those are the things we put in. But when we write, we add unnecessary words too that help us get our, our minds wrapped around what we're saying. So at the end, go back and say, can I say this more concisely? Do I need all these words that are really just filler words? That's gonna build authority. Um, if you're using first person, and I encourage you to do so, think about who you are. Just like the personal essay, you had to, in order to write as an authority and to build your ethos, you had to provide your identity. Um, yes, another. Um, also, Aristotle said we're more likely to trust a speaker, and this is authority also, when they seem knowledgeable. Um, when they seem to share our values, to show concern, they seem to be fair, objective, they seem like good people. Think about the things that Baron and Grimm did in order to seem knowledgeable and in order to show that they shared the values of their audience, that they were concerned for students, for their tutors. Um, look at how they demonstrated objectivity, how they seemed to be good people. They told us exactly who they were. And because they did that, we actually trusted them more because we knew their perspective. We knew where they were coming from, which made them seem to be more fair and objective. So, I mean, like all of these things work together. Um, questions about authority. You 
you are joining a conversation. And in fact, your ability to review the ongoing conversation demonstrates your knowledgeability about the topic and it helps you build authority. So don't assume that your writers understand the conversation that you're entering into. Baron and Graham had to review it. They had to talk, you know, like review what racism is, what productive diversity is, what the challenges of building toward diversity is. And they, and they do that by reviewing what other people have said about these things. So don't assume your readers know this, make it very clear to them. And that helps you seem knowledgeable and helps them see how you're joining the conversation. And it helps show why it matters. And you've got to make it matter. This is exigency. Um, that was a very, very important article that some of you read about demonstrating why your argument, why your topic is worth looking at again. Don't make them fill that in. As, as for the introduction, I don't know if you've ever heard um, introductions referred to as upside down triangles. So you start with a hook that introduces or catches the reader's attention and it also introduces your topic. It's interesting and you've got a primary student audience but it's not just interesting, it begins your paper. And then you act as if your reader has never heard the topic before and you provide some background information. This is the ongoing conversation. And, and then you end with a thesis statement. That's your last sentence. It might even be more than one sentence. Something that's, so it starts wide and then it goes more and more narrow until it gets the thesis statement. Remember, you also need a project statement that introduces how you're going to um, introduce these ideas. Questions about that now that you've actually written an introduction? All semester long, I've been referring to E. Shelley Reed. And that doesn't stop. Um, I hope that you've chosen a topic you care about. I know some of you have wrestled with that in order to find your way in to something that you feel does connect to you or is interesting to you or you're curious about. Show, don't just tell, adapt to audience and purpose. Um, don't assume your reader can read your mind. <laughs> I didn't finish the sentence. Ah, good job, Erin. Okay, so don't assume your audience knows all the things that you know. Um, that might include the ongoing conversation, terms that need to find. Racism can mean a lot of things. And so you've got to define it the way you want your audience to see it. Um, same with colorblindness, same with the new racism, same with whiteness. Uh, some of you caught the beginning of the conversation, then um, I was talking about you know, like what whiteness was according to a book that I'm reading right now. Don't assume your reader is going to define it the same way you do. This might include history, uh, you know, like fill in the gaps. Don't assume your reader can connect your evidence to your claims without your analysis. Don't assume your reader will see why you're using the quotations you chose. You've got to fill in everything. That's your job as a writer. The previous essay, you could have nuance. With academic writing, you want to be more explicit. It's not just a hint for academic writing. When you're building an explicit argument as you are doing with a research essay, your readers need to know where you're going. Um, there are some other cultures that have different formats, but part of the assessment is this kind of writing that we're doing. Um, if you wanna talk to me about that and you say, I've got this other idea, 
I'll entertain it and we can talk about it and how that other idea might work. That is another organizational idea. Some of you might remember the story of the little green ball and E. Shelley Reed says, try something. Hold out your hand and imagine that you have a little green ball in your hand. And then we all imagine different types of things. I imagine one of those little bouncy balls. Um, it would be lime green with sparkles in it and it came out of one of the quarter machines. That's what I see in my head. I would never see a tennis ball. So make sure your readers, you're using precise language that you've explained things for them, that you're not using vague words. Make sure that you've got examples with analysis, evidence with analysis, narratives with analysis, precise language. So your readers can see what you're talking about. Um, remember E. Shelley Reid talked about pink houses and choruses? What does that mean? Um, she talks about how you're driving down the freeway and you know a pink house is coming up and you want your passenger to see it. And so you say, hey, we're gonna see the pink house. But if you're driving so fast and you don't give them markers to look for, they're not gonna see it. That's you, you are the driver, you've gotta give them markers. Topic sentences that indicate the topic and direction of your analysis. You're keeping the thesis in mind for your audience. You've got summary sentences at the end of paragraphs. You're repeating keywords and phrases as well as pronouns. You're using repetition to build bridges between ideas. You are connecting the dots. So you don't drive so fast. Your readers do not see this fabulous pink house. I don't know where it is, but I do love it. So. Um, fruit, jello, and arguments. Continually ask yourself, how do I know this? Um, that's how you'll know you need evidence. That you're, if you, if you are saying things and you don't have evidence and you're just assuming it's true, that's a sign you need more evidence. If you've got evidence, 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 and you're not continually analyzing what it means, why it's there, how it supports your main ideas, then people are just going to not know what to do with it. So paragraphs and laundry, yes, this lovely idea. Complexity, you do not have a simple argument that has three main points and you're done. You've got a complex argument that depends on definitions and experiences and scholars. So it's not three main ideas. It might be one main idea that's developed in multiple steps. So complexity and the complexity of your argument means more paragraphs as you guide your readers through that logic. Some of the paragraphs will be long, some will be short. It depends on what your paragraph is doing. And paragraphs do something. They might analyze how a cause leads to some outcome. They might classify and divide. Um, they might compare and contrast things in which case your paragraph might be two paragraphs. Um, they might define things. You might have a definition and that's a single paragraph. That might be a shorter paragraph. It might describe, it might explain a process, it might narrate a story, it might use examples. Think about what your paragraph is doing and that helps you see how long it needs to be. And along those lines, I want you to think about how you can organize your essay. Teresa Tony organized the body of her essay as a list. And so did Baron and Grimm. They had a list. Um, Lou, who you did not read, he organized his essay by, in his project statement, he listed the reasons why he supported his thesis. And then each section was a reason that he developed in multiple paragraphs with lots of examples and lots of cause effect paragraphs. Think about how you wanna organize your essay. There needs to be some organization and that organization should enhance your argument. Um, you might tell a story in chronological order. You might compare and contrast. You might show cause and effect. 
think about what's going to be the best way to explicate your argument. And then back to E. Shelley Reed. Um, in her last section, she says, um, as a writer in college now, and as a writer in the larger world, full of real readers, you need to free yourself from the rules and learn to make rhetorical decisions. From now on, when you hear someone tell you a rule for writing, try to figure out the rhetorical challenge that lies behind it and consider the balancing acts you may need to undertake. What do you want to say? What's going to help your readers and the primary audience see what you mean and follow your main points? She says, there aren't any easy answers. Writing is still hard. But the good news is you can use those guidelines she gave as starting points when they seem appropriate and set aside the rest. Draw on key principles or metaphors and try something so that your readers can say, aha, I see what you mean, and they truly will see it. Try something. This is the very last slide I've got. What questions do you have for me? All right, then. I am done. I'm going to put you in breakout rooms. And um, we have six groups. And I know not everybody is here. Um, you should be able to join your own group. Otherwise, um, I can assign you. Who's in group one? I am. You have to say your name because I I've okay. got the breakout room. Tuan. Tuan, you're in group one. Who else is in group one? Uh, David said he's in group one in the chat. Okay. Anybody else? Isaac. Um, who's in group two? Anna. Anybody else? Roxanne. And Hannah. Okay. Anybody else? Group three? Omaru. Okay. Reese. Teresa. Anybody else? Group four. Andy. Okay. Derek. Anna. I heard Derek and I heard Ralph. Uh, yeah, and then Jenna and Jordan. I don't know. If, yeah, Jordan. And uh, Ashley. Oh, thank you. That made it easy. Um, group five. Kristen. Are you alone, Kristen? Um, I've only um, put Andre in mine. Andrea. Annie is or Drea? Drea. Okay. And who else? Romeo? Juan. Yeah. Okay. Who's in group six? Mari. Annie. Okay, Adrian. Um, oh, Adrian, are you in group six also? Okay.
Connor, um, what group are you in? Grace, what group are you in? Uh, I'm in group one, I believe. Okay. Romeo, what group are you in? Five. Five? Okay. Connor, what group are you in? A few people who haven't left. 